Hello everyone, welcome back to our videos, my name is Alan and in this particular episode, which might be a short one, I'll be showing you the procedure to establish a secure OpenVPN tunnel between a Nomada router acting as a client and being set up in standalone mode and a unified dream machine basically representing a main office or headquarters featuring one of these great unified gateways. This one is the second video in this series and as you may know, a couple months ago, Unify let everyone interact with the possibility of creating OpenVPN servers and clients from the graphical user interface, something that was only available through the CLI of these magnificent devices. That makes this implementation much easier for inexperienced users, still achieving great security levels. Also, a few months back, Omata released firmware for the corresponding devices that implemented not only new changes to the functionality of these great gateways, as we've seen in many other videos, but also implementing upgrades to the VPN features they have. Among other benefits, there is the great advantage of having a second authentication and not only the certificate which poses obvious problems. Hence, on this workshop, we're gonna be having this real-life scenario, a small office featuring IP phones, computers, mobile devices, access points, and remote printers. In this case, that is gonna be the location to which we will connect and we're gonna be calling it the main office, using an OpenVPN-enabled router acting as a client. This makes all the devices in that network be able to access all the resources in our main office. Very convenient for many. One disadvantage of this solution is that the routing taking place in the main office will not let you reach the resources in the secondary location. We'll discuss that in a future video. The huge advantage of this particular implementation is that you can place this router anywhere in the world with internet access and it'll let all client computers access the main office as if they were physically there. Very important for mobile users, traveling staff, shows, events, and many more situations in which access to your headquarters or main office is mandatory. With this version 2 of Omata routers, even wireless network providers' access is available through its USB port, and it is, by the way, a great advantage. We already saw in our last VPN video how to set up a server site, but we're gonna review that anyway right here. So the procedure is to access the controller either locally or from Unify's cloud management. This one is a UDM-supported network. Like we said, with very few clients, as we stated last video, these are real-life examples that we'll use for permanent remote access. Then go to Settings, select Teleport and VPN, and choose VPN Server. As you can see right here, we already have an L2TP server running, and I will create another VPN access through OpenVPN. We'll have to select then OpenVPN. For this video purposes, I will leave this default name. Now, if you have several ISPs, choose the IP address associated to that ISP, which is gonna be the one that is gonna be responding to the requests. Also, choose the port, which is something that you can change at any time. And as I already have a radius server running on this Dream Machine router, it is already showing me a user previously created. I'm gonna leave it as it is. A small pause right here. In case that you don't have the radius server, just go to Profiles and create or enable a radius server. This, of course, before creating your VPN server, a process that takes only a couple minutes. Don't forget to create the corresponding users. Continuing with the creation of the OpenVPN server, at this moment you still cannot download the certificate, as you need to save the OpenVPN server settings for the certificate to be generated. You can change right here the default settings if you wish to change, for example, the addresses that are gonna be assigned to clients using this VPN connection, and how many will actually connect. If you just need a simple setup, just leave the default settings and save. You can see your new server here and the address it responds at. Depending, of course, on the power of the processor of the router, the certificate may take longer to create. In this case, it just took a few seconds. Reloaded the page and it was ready to be downloaded. You will then get your OpenVPN files, which you'll use at the client computers. Important here, remember that this files analogy represents the keys to the first doors to access your location from anywhere in the world. The second one is the radius server authenticating you with a username and password. Again, the server can be run directly on these Unify routers or the Windows server of your preference. Now let's go to the client side. We're gonna be using one of these ER605 routers, very similar to the ER7206, which are the small gateways from Omata infrastructure for even a few hundred network clients. If you need something more robust, you might need to go for the most recent version of their gateways, the ER7212 PC 
which is a combination of a power over Ethernet switch, a very powerful router, and a controller that runs in it like the Dream Machines from Unify. However, we've noticed that this controller's specs may not be as powerful. Once authenticated to the router, and most importantly making sure it's running the latest firmware, let's remember that it is in standalone mode, you go to the VPN menu, select OpenVPN, then go to OpenVPN client and add the new configuration to gain access to your main office. Name how you'll identify such main office. We'll then select the mode, which is certificate plus password. Type such fields, being very careful, remembering that most of the times we experience problems connecting is because we mistype any of these fields. Select the port the server is using, also very important, and in remote server you'll type either the IP or the host name of your main office, the network you're gonna be using here at the remote location. This is so the routers will create the routing tables correctly. And finally, the most important part, which is import the certificate OVPN file. Make sure enable is checked and then click OK. You'll immediately be able to see that the tunnel is active. And in this particular case, we're gonna go to the UDM interface. Remember that we're doing this through its cloud management access and also check that the main office tunnel is reported as active. That was all. We'll be able to ping hosts in the main office, access resources that have been properly configured. Again, if you have Windows servers or, or workstations, you might want to check our video about configuring the firewall exceptions so they will let clients access their shares from active VPN networks. One question that can arise is, can I have several connections using the same username and password and the same OVPN file? The answer is yes. And that depends, of course, on the RADIUS server configuration. Let's, for example, connect from this Windows laptop. We're gonna be using the OpenVPN Connect software as we saw in a very recent video. Then connect and the Unify Gateway will report how many users are connecting to it. One of the great advantages of this implementation where the main office has this UDM is that clients will have internet access gaining the IP or even better using the remote gateway's IP. So once they connect, they will be identified as being on this main office's network. Something also very important for many. Another thing to consider is that if you decide to use a host name or FQDN as a remote machine, that same name or host name must be specified in the OVPN file. So guys, that was all for today. Thanks for watching our videos. I hope it was of great help for you. Remember that you incredibly support us by subscribing to our channel and hitting the like button. See you next time.